Do you remember Polo Fun or Polo Cross? Me neither. I saw one recently and I finally got what Volkswagen T-Cross is all about. So, what is the T-Cross? It's an SUV or a crossover based on the Polo. Fun and Cross were slightly raised Polos with plastic panels around the fenders, bumpers and doors. But the T-Cross looks different enough from the Polo for some people not to make the association. When I first saw pictures online, I could not understand where does T-Cross fit in the Volkswagen lineup. On the one hand, the T-Cross looks like T-Rock, with a straight back instead of a slanted one. On the other hand, the boxy shape made me think of Suzuki Ignis, from which the T-Cross is much bigger. In real life, the T-Cross is about the size of Peugeot 2008. Since it's based on the Polo, T-Cross is smaller than the Golf-based T-Rock. T-Cross is 54 mm longer than the Polo and 138 mm taller. Wheelbase remains the same, the T-Cross is about a centimeter wider than the Polo. The biggest differences are in the boot, which has 385 liters volume, including the underfloor storage. Unfortunately, you can't drop the floor, so you can pack a lot of stuff underneath, but it's not fully usable 385 liters. The rear bench slides up to 14 centimeters, expanding boot volume to 455 liters with the underfloor storage at the expense of rear legroom. Fold the back seats, and thanks to the double floor, you get a flat loading area and 1,281 liters. You can also fold the front passenger seat and carry items up to 240 centimeters long. I like that there are two shopping bag hooks. In the back, there is good headroom and legroom, as long as the seat is all the way back. There are two optional USB ports in the middle. There are no air vents, but door pockets are large. The cockpit looks similar to that in the Polo, with the multimedia system incorporated in the dashboard rather than sticking out like a tablet. I know many people don't like the tablet-like displays. Can you enlighten me as to why that is? Drop me a comment below. Under the infotainment system, there are air vents and climate control panel. At the very bottom is a cubby with two USB ports and an optional induction charger. Depending on the spec, T-Cross can get Discover Media Satna with internet access. You get online traffic information, weather forecast, information about tourist attractions and so on. There is also Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Traditional instrument cluster can be replaced with an optional active info display digital screen. You can view, for example, the map, which makes navigating easier. Active info display is an option on the middle and top trim. Volkswagen lets you customize your T-Cross, i.e. sell you fancy bits of trim for a lot of money, which will have no impact on everyday usability, but they will make you feel good about yourself. There are 12 paint colors to choose from, 8 wheel designs, 2 main interior colors, 6 dashboard patterns and 14 upholstery colors. At launch, T-Cross is available with a 3-cylinder 1.0-liter petrol engine with 95 or 115 horsepower. The former has a 5-speed manual gearbox, the latter can be had with a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed double-clutch automatic. A 1.6 TDI is expected soon and by the end of 2019 a 1.5 TSI will be introduced as well. During the launch event, I'm driving a 1 liter 115 horsepower version with a manual 6 speed gearbox. It takes about 10.2 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. Average fuel consumption is less than 5 liters per 100 kilometers, according to NEDC, and around 6 liters, according to WLTP. Now, during these first drive events, it's hard to get reliable fuel economy data, but having driven about 100 kilometers in extra urban cycle rather gently, uh, I got about 6 liters, just below 6 liters. MPG, Google it.
I mentioned Peugeot 2008 earlier on and not by accident because with a 1.2 liter 130 horsepower engine it's still lighter faster and more economical than the T-Cross. Volkswagen T-Cross comes with a wide array of driver aids. There's collision warning with pedestrian detection and city emergency braking. There's also lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring, as well as hill start assist and rear cross traffic alert. All this is standard. On higher trim cars, options include, among others, adaptive cruise control. Now, when selecting one of the three trim levels, uh, consider besides the styling packages, uh, practical aspects and safety aspects. I'm talking about headlights here. Middle trim, you can get optional LEDs. Top trim LEDs are standard. However, your base trim gets halogen lights. And uh, let's face it, if you're driving at night outside the city, halogens are nowhere close to LEDs. How does it drive? Well, the T-Cross drives like anything else in Volkswagen Group. It gets you from A to B. Although I admit the one liter three banger is not enough for a car weighing 1250 kilograms. I understand this is mainly a city car, but sometimes when you have to change lane, you have to downshift like to first, preferably, to get this thing going. On the motorway, also you have to downshift very often to get anything out of the engine. And on kind of B country roads, it's best not to overtake at all, especially if you have a couple of passengers on board. Although the T-Cross's natural habitat is the city jungle, it can also cope with some rougher roads. Volkswagen claims the T-Cross will remain a front-wheel drive car only, despite planned introduction of new, more powerful engines. Speaking of the city, visibility is good, actually it's great. Regardless of the trim level, you can have parking sensors front and rear, and on the medium and top trim, you can also have a reversing camera if you want. And on the top, top trim, you can also have parking assist. So driving this car around the city, parking it is easy. Also driving it on narrow roads like I'm on today, it's also easy to get by. It's a compact car and it's made for this. The T-Cross is produced in Volkswagen's Spanish plant. The Germans invest in production of compact SUVs because they forecast this segment may even double over the next decade. Dedicated T-Cross versions are also made in South America and China. Volkswagen T-Cross prices start at €18,000 for a 95 horsepower base model. Regardless of power output, I'd suggest you look at the middle trim, which starts at around €20,000. You'll probably add another €2,000, maybe €2,500 in options. Sounds expensive? Well, compare it to Peugeot 2008 or Suzuki Vitara, and suddenly the T-Cross seems reasonable. I'm not claiming Volkswagen T-Cross is the best thing since sliced bread. However, if you want to have a modern car that stands out from the crowd, take the T-Cross for a test drive. Holy guacamole. I just told my viewers they should get a Volkswagen to stand out from the crowd. The end of the world is close. And how do you like the new T-Cross? Are you in the market for a small SUV? Let me know in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends who may be looking for a new car. Don't forget to subscribe and join me for new reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.